Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Canadian Style Hunter. I'm your host, Steve Atkinson, and I am pleased to be with Steve from Rack Stacker and Homegrown Hunter TV. Steve, thank you for joining us this morning. And uh, will you just start off, just let us know a little bit about who you are and what you'd like to do. Well, a little bit about my background. Back in 97, I started in the pet industry and worked in the pet industry for 11 years under animal nutrition. Uh, while doing that and traveling all over the United States and Canada, being a sales manager, I ended up meeting uh, a lot of great people in the marketing and sales departments and stuff. And I ended up buying a farm out in the country. That, that was in 2004. That's when I started tinkering around with some wildlife attractants. And at that time, you know, it wasn't, I had no intentions of expanding across the country at that time. But as, as you know, small businesses tend to grow and Word got out about us, and sure enough, here we are 15 years later. So when I got into the rack stacker side of things, at that time, my friend worked at a, a mill, and uh, I designed a formulation, which is now a rack stacker original deer feed, which started the, the company itself. We launched our business in 2007, and I've been full-time doing it for the last 13 years. So, wow. uh, you know, with my nutritional background, being able to develop products specifically for wildlife, uh, we've been able to expand our product line to 140 SKUs. So wow. we've, uh, we've grown considerably over the years. And as I was just explaining to you, we're looking to expand the warehouse here as we push back into the United States for the upcoming season. So things are going really, really well. Uh, that's awesome. That's amazing. So uh, did you um, kind of grow up being involved in the outdoors? As it sounds like it must have been a passion of yours from young on, or was it something that was a little bit later on in your life? Yeah, like my brothers, I've got a younger and an older brother, and I was, of course, the middle boy, the troublemaker that was always outside getting into the ponds and creeks, catching frogs and snakes as a kid. And, you know, those two guys were always, you know, they're, we all love each other. We're all good brothers and stuff, but they were always into like the video games and the hockey and, you know, they do all kinds of other stuff that I wasn't really taking interest to. I wanted to be outside. So I was into scouts and beavers and I traveled in Northern Ontario with my dad and uh, done a lot of, uh, you know, excursions outdoors, planted a lot of trees back when I was a kid. And to this day, like this year alone, I planted 600 trees. So I've always been like an outdoorsy kind of guy, but honestly, I just wanted to take care of animals. It had nothing to do with harvesting or, or hunting at, at that time. But in 2005, I harvested a really great buck and, you know, friends of mine were blown away by it because I had absolutely no skill. It was strictly just bringing in the deer feed. And that's when it really started to take off. And I thought, you know what, I think I got something here. So being in the outdoors and having fun as a kid was obviously something I was certainly interested in and just expanded to be a full time career for us or for wow. myself, I guess. That's cool. Um, myself, we have uh, kind of like a, a hobby farm here and one of the things I wanted to talk about today is the difference between um, kind of the stuff you can buy on you know, the, our local feed store for our goats and our sheep, the feed mix, and stuff specifically for wildlife. Can you explain a little bit, obviously having that background of designing things for, for sort of domestic animals and then wildlife, what's the difference between the food and pasture mix that I get at my local food um, you know, feed store and rack stacker and stuff designed for wildlife? Yeah, okay, well, we'll start on the feed side. So when you, we're all registered through Canada, the United States to the FDA and the CFIA. So we registered our trademark and our business and formulations with the mills that we currently have. Now, when you go into a feed mill and you see something like layer ration or sheep ration or deer ration, you're buying a formulation and under the CFIA standards, that ration can change its ingredient at any time. And for me to register a product, we're not able to legally change the formulation. So we called it rack stack or deer feed. And it's because we don't have to call it a ration. The formulation is never going to change. So once I formulated the rack stacker original or rack stacker auto feed or any other grains that we offer like fixation or entice, that's a registered trademark under our brand. And it's registered with the CFI so that that is called a feed. And so when you're buying a ration, you know, say grain costs go up and oat prices come down, well, they can substitute a high cost ingredient like soybean and put in oats or barley or whichever they choose because they can change that ration at any given time. Whereas with our products, it's, it's never changed. Since 2004, when I developed the Rackstacker original, 
we have not changed that formulation for a purpose. And that's because we want to keep consistent product that's on the market. And we're also very competitive with our, our grains now. And the reason we are competitive is because we're buying a lot of our grains from Eastern Ontario. A lot of the farmers we've signed contracts with, we, we actually purchase the, the grain that's being planted as we speak has already been committed to by us from our mills so that we can purchase and keep everything local. So Eastern Ontario, Brockville, Kingston, up through the Ottawa region is growing our products that the, the, the deer hunters are using and that formulation will never change. So Great. that's just on the feed side. You start looking at supplementations like our mineral, uh, those formulations haven't changed at all either. Like a very, very popular product this time of year is our Blaze Mineral. It's, uh, it's milled here in Ontario. We have, we have signed contracts and trade secret agreements with our mills so that they, they know our formulation. I worked with a nutritionist to, to help formulate those products. And again, they haven't changed over the last 14 years. So, you know, we, we have consistent product that's never going to change in that you know, the consumer can be happy with that. that. That makes a lot of sense. And that's great for myself. Um, one of the things I've, I want to learn more about how to, to feed my, my herd. We've been on this property where I am now uh, for about two and a half years. And it's the first time I've had more than just like a couple acres. We have uh, 70, 77 here now and figuring out what, how can I do the best to, to feed the, the, um, the deer and, and turkeys and stuff that are here but not break the bank because you know i have four kids and they, they like to eat a lot apparently yep. um, so um someone like myself who has you know not a small but a moderately sized piece of property looking to, to to get in to set some food plots up what type of things do you recommend to again someone like me or someone listening well it all depends on what your goals are I mean, some guys just want to hold the deer on their property so that they have success in the fall. Mineral supplements like the Blaze, Stacked, or Glory work really well for that. You know, you know deer are, are very similar to humans when it comes to, you know, habitual habits or personalities. You know, if you like vinegar on your french fries, white-tailed deer may not like that. And what I mean by that is that if you and I were to sit down and have some french fries for lunch, I put ketchup on my French fries and you don't. Well, that's why we have different formulations because some deer may not like the glory because it's higher in phosphorus and calcium. Blaze is higher in vitamins A, D, and E that helps with uh, doe lactation and milk and body development. So there's different purposes. However, on my farm, I own 88 acres and I have three different mineral sites. I recommend one for every 40 acres. And if a guy's wanting to hold those deer on his property, he can use a product like Blaze or Stacked or Glory in order to hold them there and they'll keep consistently coming back and that's where that habitual habit comes back because the deer like the formulations they like what's in there they're obviously getting benefits from it over the summertime especially during the antler growing stages and then come fall that's when guys start baiting the deer so there's there's different stages now with that said white-tailed deer also prefer a liquefied formation of minerals so we've got different ways to you know apply those types of minerals like blaze can be put on a stump It'll be soaked in if we ever get some rain, because this year has been brutal for rain. Yeah, but they'll consume that stump. We also have a product called the Mineral Fountain. And the Mineral Fountain is very, very popular because you can attach it to the top of the tree. And as, as the rain falls into the bucket, it actually runs down the tree. This does two different things. One, it keeps the deer's head up off the ground, able to keep an eye out for any type of local predators, coyotes, and that sort of thing. So they like to have their head up. That's why they get a lot of daytime activity. Or you can use a, a block. We have uh, Fury Bricks. They are a four pound salt brick with apple flavoring and coconut, or sorry, they have wild berry and uh, we have another one that's acorn. You can add that to a stump. You can use our Deer Licks block, which is an apple packed with vitamins and minerals as well. You can put that on a stump. So there's different applications and it, it's really up to the, the landowner that wants to do it. Now there's, this year with COVID being on, there seems to be a huge, huge interest in food plotting. Guys have got more time on their hands. They're working from home and they don't have any you know, commutes or traveling. And of course, with the lockdown, they've got nothing to do. So they're out you know, breaking ground and learning how to do food plots. You know, we've tripled our food plot sales this year because guys are out there doing it. They're either going from one acre to three acres or they're just randomly trying walk and toss to give it a go. 
and uh, they're being successful with it. So it, it's really up to the landowner and what they're looking to do with their property in order to enhance it. But we've got a lot of different items and offers that uh, will help with help with that goal. That's good. You brought up a bunch of interesting points that um, I think I'd like to dig into a little bit deeper. First one is um, those mineral sites. I know personally um, going out in the woods is, I see a lot of guys um, like October, September 25th, they'll buy a mineral block, put it out there, you know, 12 yards in front of their stand they just hung and expect the deer to come to it. But my understanding is that's not the best way to do things. What, what's the best time of year to, to set up a mineral site? It's like you said, the, the habit is created and the, um, the most benefit to the wildlife occurs. Well, to be quite honest with you, I think it's like the ratio would probably be two to one. What I mean by that is in the springtime is the best time to be putting your mineral sites out because that's when those bucks and the does and the fawns, fawns are obviously hitting the ground right now. They need all that nutritional value in order to properly digest the food that they currently have. So springtime is definitely the time that you want to be putting the mineral out. Now we're into June now. It doesn't mean you can't start a new site in June. It's just going to take a little bit longer for them to get onto it, and you know maybe they're already onto your neighbor's mineral sites that they've got set out. So it's important to start at spring. So I, I say, based on numbers that we move, one rash or ration ration doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. <clears throat> the the <laughs> it's kind of funny. The ratio, sorry. Uh, the, the other two parts of the ratio are are guys that put it out in the fall. You know, they put it out, you know, in the September, like you say, and expect results right away. But it, it's not always going to be that effective. You can put it out in the fall. Any deer that have been lacking those minerals can certainly come to it. And I've got guys that put it out in the fall and they have almost instant success. But it can sometimes take a week or two for those deer to, to get on to it. And that's it's mostly because in September they have what you know, the antlers go to hard antlers. So they're doing their antler matrix. They're starting to disperse from their bachelor groups. So you might have a lot of fawns or you might end up having a, bu a bunch of bucks that are still in the bachelor group in September. So you can put it out in the fall. Uh, if you uh, if you read on our website or on our packaging, we always recommend putting it out in the springtime because that's when you're going to find them really hammering it and, and then top it up in the fall to get any luring deer that might be specifically in that area that don't know about it yet. So Springtime is definitely the time you want to do it, but it doesn't mean you can't put it out later in the year either. And what's the difference between getting something that's specifically formulated, a mineral supplement for the deer, and just getting like a, a those blue cow blocks um, or uh, from PSC, or I guess it's PV Mart now, but you know, the things that are six bucks, the blue block, what's the difference between what you're offering and one of those just pure salt licks? Okay, so with, with their formulations, Windsor Salt produces a 40 pound, 25 kg blue cobalt salt block. It's pressed salt through a big press that you know, obviously makes it into a block. And you can get them in multiple forms. You can get them in a TM block, which is a trace mineral. You can get them in you know, sulfur, you can get them in white salt. You know, every animal, does not matter what, what animal it is out there, has to get salt in their system. We put salt in our food because we're available to do so. And unless you have a natural mineral source that's in the area, the deer need that salt as well. So I'm not saying that salt is a bad thing. It is a good thing because they need that in order to properly digest. Now, is it going to hold them there? Maybe not. Maybe the neighbor's got a salt block out too. But if you want the leading edge, you can use something like Blaze. And Blaze has got 2,000 parts per unit of vitamin A. You're not going to get that from a salt block. You know, it's got vitamins D in it, 5,000 parts per unit. It's got vitamin E. It's got thiamine, which is vitamin B1, which is sweat through the skin in order to offset any bugs or ticks that they're getting. So there's all kinds of different beneficial advantages of using a rack stacker mineral because it helps body development. Now, with that being said, you're not going to get the phosphorus and calcium levels in a salt block like you would into the glory either. So we've got 15% of uh, calcium to 3% phosphorus, and that helps with the skeletal structure of an antler growing buck. Now, we all, most people are familiar with osteoporosis. Well, when a buck goes through that 24 hour period where he hasn't shown up, it's early September and you're like, I don't know where he was, he's been on my mineral all summer long, and then all of a sudden he shows back up and he's got hard antler. That's called the antler matrix. And that's where they go from proteins in their body 
to uh, hard antler and they draw all that uh, like hard antler bone structure within a 24 hour period out, out of their skeletal system and into the hard antler. And that's an extremely stressful time for a buck. You know, it's, it's something that we always uh, you know, look forward to because we want to see that next big buck go to hard antler. However, it's extremely stressful. And those bucks can get what's called osteoporosis, which is weakening of the bones. So when a deer is consuming glory, which is the phosphorus and calcium, it's constantly stored in the skeletal system in order for them to strengthen their bones. And then by the time this antler matrix goes through, they, they're healthier, they're, they're not going through as much stress and they recover from it a lot quicker. So there's different benefits of using the mineral. Now the difference with stacked, stacked is becoming extremely popular. We use a coconut vanilla flavoring and most guys think, why would a deer eat coconut? Well, I remember going through our mill, we were doing a tour on our mill and I smelled this and I'm not big on vanilla, but I can smell the coconut. And I'm like, where is that coming from? Well, they showed me and gave me samples and stuff and I took it out and the deer absolutely hammered it. So what we done is we just formulated a small change in our blaze and added coconut vanilla flavoring. So you know, if, if you're using mineral and your neighbors are using mineral, if you want a leading edge on that, use blaze stacked or glory because it's gonna benefit you over top of the current salt block. I'm not saying don't use a salt block. You can use a salt block, but if you want benefits to the, the herd and your own more attractiveness to the property, definitely go with the mineral site as well. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. That's um, very helpful. One of the things you, you mentioned a little earlier was how different deer can prefer different things or they have different needs or, you know, like to catch up on their fries or not. Um, like you said, food plots are exploding. People are out in the woods more doing things, looking forward to, to hunting and, and have more time to do that. What do you recommend people do on, let's say there's someone who has, we're gonna make three sort of small little food plots on their property of half acre, something like that. Would you recommend going with one kind of, of planting or do, to do multiple kinds or what would you, your recommendation be? Well, on this specific topic, you can talk a lot about um, hunting strategies and, you know, the time of the year you want to, to hunt. You know, every property is completely different, so it's a bit of a challenge. Maybe this, we can do another conference afterwards where I have a, a map behind me. I can show you the way the deer like to travel throughout the property because once you see it, I, I've done many seminars across Ontario where I've taken guys' properties, looked at the layout of it, and then helped funnel those deer into specific areas using a, a certain food source. Now, walk and toss, for instance, we'll just start at the spring of the year. We always tell guys to do uh, walk and toss trails, small pockets in the bush, anything that's gonna be like 20 by 30 yards. You can rake the debris off the ground or hit it with a drag on the back of your four wheeler and that'll clear the debris, but you can't do it in June. The reason being is all those mature perennial grasses are coming back and the seed that you're putting down is gonna compete with those grasses and they're gonna lose. So you're better off doing that in the early parts of the spring. I'd like to do it around Easter weekend. That's when walk and toss is used and you could do it in any little pocket in the bush. It works fantastic that way. Four wheeler trails are good as well. Log landings, you, you can plant all that and create a lot of food that's within the property. Now, let's say you, know, you roll into mid-May or late May and you, you have a half acre to plant. You don't want to plant walk and toss in a half acre field because walk and toss has three different types of clovers and it's got annual rye and, and uh, brassicas in it that you know protect each other throughout the summer heat but it's not price conducive to be planting a half acre of walk and toss it gets very pricey because of the clovers that we've got in there now with that said we have products called sweet success and super buck which require you to work the land up, drag it level, have a good seed bed to seed down on. But Superbuck has seven different types of clover in it with bird's foot trefoil, chicory, alfalfa, brassicas that all work in order to draw those game animals out in the early bow season. Then you get guys that want to have turkey and deer in the specific area. I'm not saying turkey aren't going to eat uh, the Superbuck because they will. However, Superbuck only gets about 16 to 18 inches tall like when it's fully grown. So you're not gonna have any type of cover. You're not gonna have any food source above the snow line. So Sweet Success is designed for both deer and turkey. So if you've got a big open area where you wanna have both animals in there, 
the sweet success grow was almost seven feet high. So when you start getting dumps of snow in December, you can hold the deer because there's good cover. The deer will eat the seed heads as well. So it's high in carbohydrates. It also helps feed the turkeys and keep them around in the winter time in order for you to shoot them in the spring. So it's got certain benefits to it. Now, let's push it a month. You get into July, you're like, oh, it's too late to plant. It's not too late to plant. We've actually got products like Field Edge and Biggins Radish that you can plant in late July to early August, and it's got a 72 maturity date on it. So if you plant it on August long weekend, it's almost prime time by Thanksgiving, and you could be bow hunting over it as soon as you get your first frost. So there's lots of different stages of food plotting. We actually have a map called the DOA. We call it the DOA. It's the dead on arrival formula, and it's based per month. So across the top, you'll see January through December. And then of course the left side, you, it's like a graph. The left side's got all your products and it tells you what to plant, when to plant. And of course the time of the year that it attracts the animals. So, you know, those types of tips are what we're trying to offer to our consumers. And, you know, they're leading, they're leading more towards uh, rack stacker because we offer that type of help. And food plots can be tricky if you're new to it. You know, if you're doing multiple stages of food plots, I don't suggest putting one field in one specific product. Always try and change it up because, again, going back to white-tailed deer, they're habitual, but they're also natural foragers. They don't stand in a field eating like a cow. They want to be able to, you know, pick away at this branch or pick away at that clover or go over here and feed on this. So depending on the time of the year, we've got forages available for them to feed year-round. So if you've got two or three half acre plots, do half a super buck, half in field edge, and maybe half in uh, Biggins radish or something like that, so that you can get them touring around your property in the later season for the hunt. Yep, no, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, that wasn't too much. No, I think that that's great. It makes a lot of sense, and really appreciate you know that DOA um, information and advice. Like uh, because it is there's there's so much there's so many opinions and there's so much out there sometimes deciding what you're going to do i know for myself like well i could do this i could do this and there's 700 options it seems like trying to narrow down what's the the best for my property um it's great to support canadian and support local that's something that we highly value but it helps to narrow down on on what the best choice is um for us to for us to do whether myself or or other hunters out there um what have you found? I, mean, I would like to touch base just on quality of seed, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, for sure. You know, you talked about feed stores having, you know, specific products, and we talked about the rations and that, but you got you can't compare rack stacker forages to your typical co-op uh, seed either. And the reason I say that is because we buy what's called government certified seed. It's uh, referred to as certified seed. The government guarantees the purity of the seed and the germination rate. So when you go to plant our products, the government guarantees that I'm gonna get a 95% germination rate, which you know pretty well guarantees the consumer, the guy that's buying the food plot seed, that he's gonna have a success with it because I don't want any trouble. Now, if you go into, I'm not putting down any feed stores or co-ops, but they choose to do what they want. But you can go in and buy one pound of clover and one pound of this and one pound of that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Go ahead and do so. But don't be calling me asking what the problem is because it wasn't our product. And the difference between, you know, which I've seen many, many times over the years, that, that seed that you're buying from them could be common number one. And, you know, it could have a much lower germination rate. It could be older seed, it, you know, the, the, what's called inert content, which does not grow. It's like the dust in the grain hulls and stuff. It might be, you know, full of that. Where with our seed, when you look at the packaging, you'll see through the clear bag in the back that it's it's pure seed. It's very, very clean. You're, you're buying straight seed and you're gonna have the most success with Rack Stacker. And not only that, you can contact us on our 1-800 hotline. It's 1-800-945-1846. Uh, you can call that and it goes right to my cell phone. So when, when I answer that, you're getting answers right on the fly. And if you go back to some of these other stores, you may not get the answers that you're looking for. So that's why when you purchase Rackstack, you're going to get the support that you need in order to get it done right. Oh, that's excellent. I really appreciate that. That's fantastic. What do you recommend people do to prepare the ground for um, like the sweet success and some of the other products you mentioned? If they're looking to, they say they're listening to this um, podcast here in, in June and thinking, man, I've got it out there and I got to get something 
going for this fall. Um, what should we do to prepare our food plot, prepare the ground to plant the seed? Well, first things first is to, to mow any type of weeds or grasses that are currently in the spot. You have to get rid of the weed competition. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. First and foremost, mow it right to the ground. Try and cut it off as low as you possibly can. And you can either let the sun beat it off over the summertime, but as natural grass grows, it, it might come back. You can work it up with a disc or a drag. I mean, my, my first um, set of discs was just one of those old, you know, busted up gang farm tra tractor discs. And it was, it was cheap, but I think I paid 300 bucks for it. That's what I used the first couple of years. And it wasn't any, anything fancy. Now, of course, you know, I'm in the 35 or 40 acres a year in food plots. So I've got higher quality equipment that gets the job done a little quicker, but don't get all carried away with it. If, if you're not going to you know, go right into it full time. So, but smaller equipment, break the ground up. I also recommend using a, a glyphosate herbicide like Roundup. There's lots of other products out there. Do not buy the stuff from the big box stores. It does not work that very well because it's very diluted. Try and knock on a farmer's door. That's how I get my Roundup. I just call the farmer and ask him if he can spray for me. You'd be surprised what a case of beer and a $20, $20 bill will do. You know, so you know, talk to your local farmer, try and get it sprayed. You can use a hand sprayer. I, for many years, used a hand sprayer spraying a half an acre. It takes a bit of time, but, you know, now we're upgraded to a 12-foot boom. So it, it really depends on what your budget is. But from the beginning, you got to get rid of that weed competition. And if, as soon as you start breaking ground, you'll uproot all the weeds that are currently there, get the, the sun to dry the root system out, and you'll find that the more you work it, the better it will dry out. So if you want to plant now, it's mid-June, get in there, mow it to the ground, start working up the land, get it busted up so that it you know, not only dr dries the roots and weeds out, but it also prepares the soil to be planted in later in July. Then you can seed down late July once we get some rain. Um, that time of year, you want to be planting a product called Field Edge and Bacon's Radish. That stuff is the one that grows super fast and it'll choke out any weeds that you currently have. Once the deer consume the food plot through the winter months, you can go in there in the springtime and work it again, but now you're not competing with the weeds. So you've worked it up, you've dissed it really well, and you're able to do everything you can possibly to, to get the best seed to soil contact. So it does take some time. I, I've actually talked to many guys over the years too that they call me up and they say, hey, I want to put three acres in. I always tell them it's best to do one acre absolutely perfect than it is to do three acres completely screwed up because you're going to be frustrated you're going to be irritated. You're going to dump a pile of time and money. Your wife's going to be mad. Kids aren't going to have dad there because you're getting out in the field trying to work field. And you're getting mad because the equipment breaks or whatever, whatever it may be. But it's happened many, many times before where I'm like, all right, I'm putting three acres in today. And you get half an acre done and you're just madder than a hornet because you've been in there for eight hours working in the heat trying to get it done. And it just becomes frustrating. So yep. what I try and do is stage my plots, do a half acre in the spring. After that half acre is seeded, impacted, and rolled and done by the DOA, move on to the next half, a, half an acre, get that done. You know, don't get in a rush. I actually, it's funny because I practice what I call the six P's to plotting. Proper preparation and patience prevents poor plotting. If you take your time, do it right, follow our recommendations, you will be successful. But don't try and rush it. Guys get all antsy and they can screw it up pretty quick. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. Um, uh, as I as I get a little older or, or mature a little bit, I'm not sure which comes first, the maturity or the getting older. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyways, that's a whole other conversation. Um, but realizing uh, so often you you quality matters, um, both quality effort and quality products that you put in. Um, I know when I was younger, so often I tried to take shortcuts to get there and. Sometimes, man, you, I take 10 shortcuts to try to save, you know, the one ray and it takes me five times as long because I'm crisscrossing back and forth. But if I just would have done it the right way, you know, maybe paid a little more at the beginning to get quality product, um, things would have gone a lot smoother for me. I think that's, like I say, don't, don't bite off more than you can chew, but do it well. And that makes a big difference. It, it certainly does, you know, and you start looking at cutting corners and stuff. You're just going to... Think of it this way. You're willing to take, call it two days of your time, take a whole weekend to do a half acre food plot. You're going to 
push hog it, wait another week to dry it out, and then you're going to get in there and work it the following weekend. You're going to disc it all up. You're going to buy $100 worth of the fertilizer. You're going to buy $100 worth of the seed. You're going to spread it all down. If you're going to take those steps to do that, and then you have to wait six months to see a result, why would you cut a corner? If you cut it, okay, let's just cut the cost in half. So we're going to put $50 worth of fertilizer and $50 worth of seed. And then you spend eight or 10 hours of your time getting it ready. And then by September, it didn't work. Yeah. How mad are you going to be? Then there's a guy that potentially could have been a great food plotter. And he's just irritated and frustrated beyond belief. And now I'm going to have to try and babysit him back and encourage him to do it. But if you follow the steps and do it right and put the investment in, put your heart into it and know that it's going to be done. You can do a food plot, a half acre food plot in about an hour with the right equipment spray the weeds, get the farmer in there. He'll even maybe work it up. I actually did a consultation a week ago with a guy and he said he had no equipment. And I thought, well, is there a local farmer, you know, that might be able to come in here? He said, he'll make some calls. Well, the next day he sends me a photo. He went in with a rotary tiller and just, it was gorgeous. And I'm like, okay, now I'm jealous because I don't have a farmer with that kind of equipment. But he did it right. He, he took the steps and done it right and seeded it right away. So, you know, don't be discouraged by equipment. You know, equipment is very costly. It doesn't make sense to go drop four or $5,000 on equipment if you're only going to use it once a year. Go and drop $100 and pay a farmer to do it. And, it'll, you know, it'll take him no time at all to do it if he's got the equipment. So, and sometimes the farmers will do it for nothing. You'd be surprised. Give them some back straps and it's amazing what they'll do, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Get creative. Right on. Well, that's great, Steve. I, uh, I really appreciate your time and your, your advice and your wisdom here. I know it's, like I said, 2020 and 2021 have been uh, challenging for a, a lot of us in a lot of ways, but it's great that people are getting outdoors more and investing more in, in their hunting and fishing and, and stewardship of, of wildlife. And I, I really appreciate your products being Canadian made. I think it's great that you're starting to expand and you know, take on the US market as well, but really appreciate local product, local sourcing. I think it's just fantastic. We, we try and source absolutely everything for, you know, obviously the Canadian market to be from Canada. There are a couple of U.S. products, and we recently come up with what's called the Crown Jewel, and we bring that in from a, a salt mine in Pakistan. So, like, there's a couple of different things that we source overseas, and it's not a lot. You know, like, all of our packaging, all of our labels all come from Ontario. Oh, sorry about that. Um, a lot of the packaging and all the products that we currently have, food plot, mineral, uh, seeds, and also the, um, the feed products are fixed and enticed are all done in Canada. A lot of them, it's quite funny. We're going to do a video this fall. Our, our mill is putting in a robotic arm to keep up with the volume this year. So we're going to go to the mill and we'll have, you know, a video of what we're doing and how the robotic arm is coming off the line with all of our product for the fall so that's going to be coming up here in july it's an exciting time of the year as we continue to grow and you know you're going to see rack stacker for a long time ahead because we're do we're going nowhere but up oh, that's fantastic that's great and if people listening want to check out your stuff where should they go we have a website called uh, rackstacker.ca um, that's going to be the most informative one there you can also follow us on social media. You can follow myself, Steve Elmy, but that's more of a personal page. I put my own opinions on there about politics and a bunch of other crap. But if you want to follow food plots and attractants and that sort of thing, you can follow us at Rack Stackers uh, Big Game Attractants. And of course, the Homegrown Hunter TV is where we, we do a lot of our instructional videos. It's aired on the Sportsman's Channel Canada, so you can watch us this coming. Uh, it actually starts October 1st our uh, third season of the homegrown hunter, you'll see us food plotting and using those products in the field and how they, how they help us hunt. Well, that's great. Well, thank you for your stop, uh, your time there, Steve and everyone else. Check them out. Rack stacker is uh, great stuff. Canadian made Canadian operated and it's good stuff. Thanks for your time, Steve. Thanks. No problem, man. I appreciate you having me on.